This is amazing. This is a piece of Americana. These tanks are well. Isn't that something? Well, over a hundred some years. These are fermentation tanks. These, these are they gotta be 20 barrel. The story we're familiar with about peoples is that it was the result of a socialist movement. Supposedly, a bunch of saloon keepers came together uh, to form their own brewery so that they could buy beer that wasn't made by those capitalists over at Fitker's. That's the myth we've always had, that it was kind of a socialist uh, political bent to it. And what we're discovering through recent research is that doesn't appear to be true. The peoples of Duluth, similar to peoples in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, and to some others, were breweries that were largely subscribed to by local saloon keepers who were tired of the very high rates being charged by out-of-town brewers or sometimes even the other major brewers in town and they thought they could make a better beer, they could make a cheaper beer and in fact that they could share in the profits of making their beer. In 1906 a gentleman named F.C. Toll comes to town selling shares in a brewery he wants to build. Hundred dollars a piece he wants to raise three hundred thousand dollars to build this brewery. About six or seven months later he runs an ad in the uh, Duluth News Tribune saying that the project has been canceled and he left town. He didn't take off with the money though, right? Some of the principal investors, uh, a gentleman named Sandstent and Gleason and Pat Duran, um, decided we've still got a good chunk of money here. Why don't we go ahead and do this ourselves? You know, when you look at pictures of it, um, I certainly wouldn't call that an architectural masterpiece, that place. I mean, very utilitarian, and I mean, it was built to do what it did. But it was a small concern, and you know, right from the get-go, that's going to make things more difficult when you're operating on a much smaller scale. When Peoples opened up, they were capable of producing 25,000 barrels of beer a year. And they probably hired about 10 to 15 people. And a great many of its shareholders were indeed West Duluth and West End saloon keepers and hotel owners and other people that dealt in the liquor trade. And every spring, they announced in the paper that they were giving out dividends to their shareholders. They, unlike uh, Duluth Brewing and Malt and Fitkers, pretty much stayed at home. They, they didn't expand, they didn't build saloons, they didn't build hotels. Most of their beer uh, was sold by the keg to saloons. Um, they did a little bottling, but not nearly as much as the other two Duluth brewers. So they were, they were pretty much your hometown brewery. So that was how our third major brewery started in Duluth, up and running by about 1909, when they finally um, hit the streets with their first beer.